In this video, we are going to prove the uncertainty principle mathematically. So we will start from a function f of t, which can also be a complex function, and we will define this integral here, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the variable t, which is the variable of time, multiplied by the magnitude of f of t squared dt, and let's also divide by integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod f of t squared dt, this is going to give me the average value for the time variable t. Usually you can think of this function, the mod squared of f of t, as a probability, like in quantum mechanics. Okay, so we can also set this probability equal to 1, for example. It's not necessary, but I can do that in order to be able to write a more concise formula. So. The formula is this one here because the denominator is equal to 1. And we are going to choose this average such that it is equal to 0. We are still going to be very general. So if we set the average of t equal to 0, it means that this integral here is going to give me 0. For example, we can simply choose the time axis such that the mod squared is symmetric with respect to this axis. This is the function mod of f of t squared. And then we're also going to the omega domain, the frequency domain, so we are going to define the average frequency omega as the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of omega, and then here we put the magnitude of the Fourier transform of f of t, which is f hat of omega, magnitude squared d omega, and in this case we also have to divide by integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod of f hat of omega squared d omega. We can calculate the denominator here because it is related to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod f of t squared dt. And we can rewrite it like this. If we use the Fourier transform, we can rewrite it as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then mod f of t squared can be rewritten as f of t times f star of t dt and then I'm going to rewrite this using Fourier transforms integral from minus infinity to plus infinity here we have 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f hat of omega e to the i omega t d omega times integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f hat star of omega e to the minus i omega t d omega and then we also have to divide by 2 pi this function as well and I have to multiply by dt. Now if we want to put these two integrals together I should call the variable omega here a different name so I will put omega prime and then I'm going to integrate over t. When I integrate over t the only functions that I have to integrate are these complex exponentials which can be put together. They're going to give me e to the i omega minus omega prime times t. And when I integrate that function, I will get 2 pi times the Dirac delta of omega minus omega prime. So let me do it here. I have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of 2 pi over 2 pi squared. Here I have f hat of omega times f hat star of omega prime delta of omega minus omega prime d omega d omega prime. It's easy to see that this integral is going to give me 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod f hat of omega squared d omega. And we know that we started from this integral here, which I can set equal to 1, and therefore this is equal to 1, which means that this integral here is going to give me 2 pi. Now let's consider this. Let's take the integral of t squared mod f of t squared dt over r. So I integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. This is going to give me delta t squared, which is the variance of the variable t. And I can also define integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of omega minus average of omega, because in this case the average is not necessarily equal to zero. In this case the average of t was zero, so I didn't have to consider 
the average in the formula, but here I should also put minus average of omega, and then I integrate also mod of f hat of omega squared d omega, and I have to divide by the integral of this mod squared over d omega, but I know that that is equal to 2 pi, so I can divide simply by 2 pi, and this is going to give me delta omega squared, the variance of the variable omega. Now that we have defined these variables, we can consider this quantity. So let's consider omega minus average of omega, or I can simply call this, if you want, the average of omega, I can call it omega bar, which is another notation, and omega bar is simply defined as average of omega. It's the same thing. Then we divide by some constant here, k. We will see later what this constant might be. Then I have delta omega squared times f hat of omega plus the derivative of f hat d omega. We take the mod squared of this and we integrate over d omega from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we'll show that from this integral we will derive the uncertainty principle. We know that since this is a mod squared and we are going to integrate a mod squared, this is greater than or equal to zero. And this will help us find the uncertainty principle. But before that, let's try to do some manipulations on this integral. We can rewrite this as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of omega minus omega bar divided by k delta omega squared f hat plus d half hat d omega times omega minus omega bar divided by k delta omega squared f hat star plus d half hat star d omega d omega. This is what this integral here is equal to. And now let's do some algebra integral from minus infinity to plus infinity here we get omega minus omega bar squared divided by k squared delta omega to the fourth power mod f hat squared plus we get omega minus omega bar divided by k delta omega squared and then here we have some cross terms of this kind f hat d f hat star d omega plus d f hat d omega times f hat star and then we also have another term of this kind we have plus mod d f hat d omega squared and then we multiply all of this by d omega now if you take a look inside this parenthesis we have d over d omega of the mod of f hat squared. That's exactly equal to this because the mod of f hat squared can be written as f hat times f hat star. And if you check, these two are exactly the same. So let's rewrite it below. Here we have, when we integrate this first term, we get delta omega squared times 2 pi divided by k squared delta omega to the fourth power. Remember the definition for delta omega squared. We found it here. Then we have to integrate the second term here. And we can integrate by parts because we have a derivative here. And if you integrate by parts and you assume that the mod squared of f goes to zero quite rapidly, we are only left with minus integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod of f squared d omega divided by k delta omega squared. And then we have plus integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of mod d f hat over d omega squared d omega. Now the second term here is one is simply equal to 2 pi, so this is 2 pi, and we are left with calculating this one, this integral here. So let's calculate that integral, and we are going to do that by using Fourier transforms. So 
we can rewrite that as integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of d over d omega, and then here we have an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t e to the minus i omega t dt, and then we have d over d omega integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f star of tau e to the i omega tau d tau. And I also have to multiply by d omega here. I have simply rewritten this mod squared like this, df hat over d omega times df hat star over d omega, and then I have rewritten these two functions by using the Fourier transforms. That's quite easy. Now we are going to integrate over d omega, and when we integrate over d omega, we can get rid of some terms. Before integrating over d omega, we have to take the derivatives with respect to omega. In this case, we have to simply calculate the derivatives of this complex exponential. So we get integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of f of t. Here we have minus i t, e to the minus i omega t dt times integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, f star of tau, i tau, e to the i omega tau, d tau, d omega. And now we can integrate over omega because we can get rid of these complex exponentials. We will get a factor of 2 pi Dirac delta of t minus tau. So we get 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, f of t. And then when I multiply this, by this, I will get t times tau, and then I will also have f star of tau, delta of t minus tau, dt d tau. When I integrate over tau, this will give me 2 pi integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, mod f of t squared t squared dt. But now, what is this? This gives me delta t squared, the variance of t. And now I can replace the result that I have found here. So let me go here. I have delta omega squared 2 pi divided by k squared delta omega to the fourth power minus 2 pi divided by k delta omega squared. And then I get here from this result plus 2 pi delta t squared, and this is greater than or equal to zero, remember where we started. Now I can simplify this a little bit, I can rewrite it as 1 over delta omega squared times 1 over k squared minus 1 over k plus delta t squared greater than or equal to zero, and now we can also rewrite it as delta omega squared times delta t squared greater than or equal to 1 over k minus 1 over k squared. And now this inequality will hold for every value of k, and k is a real number. So I didn't say that at the beginning, but k is a real number, which is non zero. And since this is true for every k, this inequality will hold also when this function here, a function of k, reaches its maximum. Even if it is maximum, this inequality will hold, and we will have to find the value for k is such that it maximizes this function, f of k equal to 1 over k minus 1 over k squared. We can easily find the maximum of this function. This function behaves like this. For k greater than 0, the behavior is something like this. It has a maximum somewhere here, and then it goes flat like this. And this is the maximum value that we have to find. We are not interested in what happens when k is less than 0 because there is no maximum there. It's easy to show from calculus. Let's take the derivative of this, f prime of k is equal to minus 1 over k squared plus 2 over k to the third power. This can be rewritten as minus k plus 2 over k to the third power, and then we can set this greater than or equal to 0, for example. And this is true when k is less than or equal to 2, and k is also greater than or equal to 0, actually greater than 0 because we have to discard the solution where k is equal to zero.
Or this inequality is also true when k is greater than or equal to 2 and k is less than 0. But this is not possible, right? So we have to discard this possibility because it cannot happen. So if we draw this graph here where f prime is positive between 0 and 2, and then of course this negative here, f will decrease here, increase here, and decrease here. So 0 is a discontinuity, so this point here is not really a minimum. But this point here is a maximum, because we see that the function f increases and then decreases like this. So k equal to 2 is a maximum for this function, and we can set k equal to 2 here. So we get delta omega squared, delta t squared, greater than or equal to 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4, which is 1 over 4. So when we take the square root, we get delta omega times delta t greater than or equal to 1 over 2, which is exactly the uncertainty principle that we derived by using the Fourier analysis. This means that if the uncertainty that we have in the time domain is very small, then the uncertainty in the frequency domain is very large because delta omega is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 delta t. So it means that the probability function in the time domain is narrow like this, which basically means that we have a very small standard deviation or a very small variance. Then the variance in the frequency domain would be larger. Okay, so this is just for the sake of visualization. This also means that if a wave is localized in time, then we are going to get a wide spectrum. It is not possible to have a small bandwidth, let's say, in the frequency domain and a small uncertainty in the time domain.